Hey everybody. The other day I heard some fishermen talking and one of them said the S word. We all know what the S word is, especially us cat fishermen. The spawn. No! 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 Why does it strike so much fear into our hearts? Crappy fishermen can't wait for the spawn. Striper fishermen, largemouth, bluegill, about every species can't wait for the spawn because you know where they're going to be. But for some reason, the catfish just disappear. The numbers that you catch drop significantly. So all these fish don't spawn at one time. Think about it. The backs of creeks and shallow water gets warmer quicker. Just because they started spawning on the upper end of the lake don't mean they started spawning on the lower end of the lake. So when you see the spawn or you start to see the signs of the spawn, just move. Change areas. Let's talk about what to look for. The signs that tell you that the spawn is getting ready to happen. Well, the channel cats, their mouths will turn purple. Their heads will swell up. Their bodies just blowed up. Hey, don't circle. Got him right in the corner. The blues, you'll see their bellies start to change color, get a little bit darker. Sometimes they'll even have like speckles of black all over their bellies. It's another jacked up blue. These fish are getting ready to spawn. I hate that. Look. See that? That's hormones. See? He's all hormoned up. Look at that belly all black. Say bye. Look at that. Black all the way down to his, his vent. Their heads are swelling. Usually you'll see a lot of wear and tear on their body where they've been fighting with other males for territory. And the flatheads, oh, they'll tear themselves all apart. I've seen flatheads missing parts of their fins with cuts and gouges all over them from fighting for territory. And sometimes they'll fight blues for the same territory. I've got a picture of a flathead Flathead weighs 48 pounds. It was during the spawn. This flathead has a bite mark on it. The flathead we caught at 48 pounds was about 13 inches across his mouth. The bite mark was bigger than 16. Was it another male trying to run this male off? Or was it a female? And it was a male trying to hold on to her. Don't know. But in the picture you can see he was very aggressive and he left a heck of a hickey. It's the second big flathead I've seen with that mark. But like I say, you just got to pay attention, but the fish can still be caught. You just got to set your expectations to where you're only going to catch three, four fish, but they may be quality fish you catch. And I target bigger fish. Sure, the numbers go down, but I've had three of my best days on the water have been in May. My biggest fish I've ever caught was at the end of May, right at peak spawn time. They can be caught. It's just not as easy as it usually is. But think about it. If you're in a large body of water, don't concentrate just on one area of the lake. The shallower parts of your lake, the fish are going to go into spawn earlier. Why? Because the temperatures go up quicker. Shallower water warms a lot quicker. And they don't all go on spawn at one time. Keep your head up. They're out there. They can be caught. But the problem is, just find them. I always look in the mouth of any tributary that feeds the river or any of the major creeks that feeds the lake. 
because more than likely those fish in the backs of these creeks, that water gets a little warmer quicker, they're going to get out of there quicker. They're going to get it over with. See, like a lot of species of fish, they do their hen and shin, the catfish, and uh, after they're done, the male stays behind to protect the eggs. Crappy do it. The males go into the sandy beaches along the shoreline. They prepare a bed. Bluegill do it. And then after the females come in, they'll lay their eggs. The male stays there to protect them. But when the bite gets really tough right after the spawn, concentrate in the mouths of these tributaries that feed into the lake and the rivers. Concentrate in the mouths of your major coves. Those fish have been back there in that shallow water. They've spawned. They're moving out to the deeper water to rest up a little bit and to start feeding again. Look for them. They'll be around in that area. You'll see a lot of isolated fish. They won't be schooled up. You got to take and try to find them on your depth finder. And another key place to look is in the first deep water outside of the mouths of these creeks and tributaries. Find these deep water ledges. A lot of times these beat up females that go out there and they'll find them a place and they'll just hunker down for a little bit to recover. All right, I hope these tips help somebody. If you have any questions, comment. If you like what you see, subscribe. I appreciate you watching the video. I really do. Thank you for watching.